There you go. And somebody didn't hear the warning, don't use the toilet. We begin where we left off last week, my plumbing issues. So Friday was the very next morning. We began to dissect and see exactly what was wrong. After all was said and done, realized we just basically had a classic backup. Was afraid that we were gonna have a broken pipe and we'd have to dig up and find it. But there must be a crack because the, the sewage was coming out of this pipe, which is just a six foot piece of nothing. I've always known that it didn't do anything. And suddenly one day, sewage is coming out of it. See if you can pry it up. Come on, baby, break. So there was a rain drain that went to, the, went to the main drain. We got a clog down in the field and it had nowhere to go. Sophie, Sophie. The snake was too wimpy. Stuck the garden hose in there. She was able to blast open the, the blockage. Water coming? Oh, it's just the uh, interior growth inside the pipe. Well, it's part of the problem. It certainly was. I mean, that's flowing nice now. So I took advantage of this open hole. Take advantage of that at my brother's suggestion. Joey suggested that we use that as a clean out. And since I broke open that whole step on the corner, which David Welder built, I'm gonna rebuild that corner back and the top stone will be loose, she'll be able to remove the top stone and have a clean out. So I can go back mm -hmm. down to the field or I can go back up to the house. It's moments like this that you take as a learning experience and you get to see how plumbing was done a hundred years ago. So thanks for the clay pipes, guys. On my way back from Rochester with Chris, I stopped to show him this lathe that I'm interested in. I talked about it on the podcast a couple months back and somebody who recognized where and what I was talking about knew it, figured out who the owner was, got me in touch with the owner. I spoke and we kind of made a deal, but I think what I might do is grab this lathe and make porch poles for my house, sculpted porch poles. Long-term project. I love old metal like this. I just can't help it. <laughs> this is the lathe, a 14 foot bed. Oh my gosh. It's sitting out here in the weeds. They said for about four years. This isn't all that roached. I mean, no, he said he said before he put it here, it was inside. <laughs> so I might take it and drag it up to my place. Oh, sh well, I mean, oh. you're gonna need a bigger barn. Uh, let's see wow. that. These knobs are actually turning. I can't believe it. Come on, sorry, I dropped the piece. <laughs> he says he's got more tooling and stuff inside. This is funny that these are all broken off like that, but. Good. It's not too pitted. Dude, you need to have like a, a maker convention. Everybody brings tools and we all work on it together. You know, we <laughs> take it apart. And I spoke to the guy a couple days ago. He said, you know what? He goes, I never used the thing. He goes, you might as well. He says, if you want it, I'll sell it to you. My cousin Teddy on the piano, who's also a maker. Also shipped 100 handmade ice picks, and if you get an ice pick, you'll see this new joint. It's much simpler, a bit easier for production, and I kind of think it's a little sexier.
That's good, isn't it? Check those out. Those are pretty cool. This episode of the podcast is sponsored by graphicstock.com. Go to graphicstock.com forward slash holiday for 50% off a one-year subscription. I went through the library. I found this image. I was able to download it. I brought it into Fusion 360. I was able to turn it into a 3D model. And then I was also able to bring it into VCarve Pro and I was able to turn it into this plastic hard image that I could use for a lamp. Graphic Stock has the largest unlimited download library of graphics, photos, vectors, and images on the internet. Graphic Stock has over 300,000 plus graphics, photos, vectors, and images. Most websites charge for image or graphic for you to be able to use their images in commercial projects that can cost as much as $30 per image. These costs add up quickly when you're designing a website, running a blog, or a YouTube channel, or making DIY art projects you might want to sell. Graphic Stock, you can get unlimited downloads for one flat annual fee. All memberships come with 100% royalty free agreement. This means that you are protected and cannot get sued by the copyright holders for using these images in your commercial projects. Usually $99 for the year, this holiday season graphic stock is offering an exclusive $50 discount so you can get access to this massive library of royalty free licenses for $50 off. If you support my sponsors, it helps to keep me in the workshop. Driving in Brooklyn the other day, I saw these guys painting on this wall. So these guys have this wall and they write on it all the time, but it's very rare that you actually catch them working. So I stopped and introduced myself and I got to be friends with these guys and we might do something together. Uh, I don't have a sticker, I just have a stencil. I got you. Right. Where's my stencil? You. you want one? I can yeah. run a call. Yeah, I want one. Yeah. yeah. Take that. I got a CNC machine. We'll cut it out. Make it out of that. What do you need? You need the the um, the vectors. You need the vector file. That's all I, I got. It. Yeah. <laughs> I got my, it. He's got yeah. my email all over right. here too. All right. I'm yeah, gonna, I'm we're far. gonna do business, my friend. Oh, all right. Serious, all right. Serious. Good thing you came out. <laughs> I'm real excited about making friends with these guys. Thank you, pleasure. Appreciate it. Eric Sire One. Jimmy. I'll be in touch with you guys. Prince, nice to meet you, brother. Same here, man. I'm gonna hit you up, man. Right, peace. Pleasure, man. So I get tons of really good packages in the mail. This week I got a great package from Michael Schuler, also known as Will Work for Tools. I just wanted to highlight him because what he did was pretty incredible. You know when you think you want to get a job with somebody or if you want to impress somebody with something that you want to help them do, you take initiative and he certainly did. Check this out. Michael made 100 ice picks to learn how to make ice picks and he wanted to show me his accomplishment. If you come to Boston this week, you will be able to buy one of these and I'm selling them for whatever you want to donate to Michael. All the money's gonna go back to him because I want him not to be out of pocket for these. If you come to Boston this week, you'll have an opportunity to buy one of these made by Michael Schuler in the style of my original ice pick. Thank you, brother. One of the main reasons I wanted to do this vlog was because I know there are stretches of time where I can't get to build videos. And it's not that I can't get to them, I can't get to finishing them. I'm always starting videos, I just don't always have the time to finish them on a regular basis. So I wanted to show you two videos that are coming up soon. You saw this on my Instagram. This slick I bought at an antique shop. There's a great antique shop in upstate New York at a town called Westerloo. Ray owns it and Ray is amazing. He gets the coolest stuff. I paid a dollar for this. I started the restoration process by removing the rust and I also got this from him for a dollar and this had handles on it and I'm gonna remake the handles. This is like a little scoopy draw knife. So this is upcoming video. Hopefully I'll have this by next weekend. I'm gonna do sort of companion videos. They'll be individual, but they'll basically be happening at the same time in real life. I don't think I could fix this. I'm just gonna have to snap it off and make it shorter. So it'll be like that. And uh, we don't know what happened here. He has absolutely no idea. He just found it in a barn. So videos are coming. I just don't have time to finish them week to week, which is why I do this vlog so that at least I have something that's gonna show you what's going on week to week. 
I also want to address something else that's been going on this week. For some reason, a lot of my videos are popping up on other channels and everybody's telling me about it and I really appreciate everybody highlighting and that's how I found out about most of them. But there apparently is a lot of knockoff channels. I think it's the same crew because there's Make Technology, which is a fake channel. There are two channels with my name, Content Technology, the rest of Make Technology. They mix up these words and I they all seem to be from the same crew. I'm happy to report that I now have Content ID. If you don't know what Content ID is, look it up. There's a video on YouTube about it. I could put all my original files or my original videos into the system and the system finds content matches and then I can decide whether I want to have them taken down, whether I want to monetize them. It's funny because around the world you don't know who's watching what and filtering out all these fan uploads around the world. Lots and lots and lots of videos. Some with a few hits, some with millions of hits. It's pretty amazing. So thank you YouTube for that. <laughs> My cameraman for the day. A dot the rest of Instagram, A dot Snapchat, the rest of what? Eden dot the rest of Snapchat. And when you find him, you gotta say, don't tickle me Elmo, and he'll know that you found him through this channel. Yeah. If I get 500 people, then I will post a nude picture of Jimmy. And now for a little piece of life on the farm. It's a little graphic, I'm sorry. Oh my God, please stop squeaking. Kitty. All right, did she break its back? Yeah, she bit his arm off. Oh my God. Let right. have it. You go, girl. Oh. I'll see you in Boston this Saturday. Thank you.